Hi, my name is E. Ben. Today, Boneyface 3 has been released, and to celebrate this amazing new version with tons of new features, I'm going to show you in this video tutorial, a complete facial motion capture workflow, so at the end of this video, you will know how to animate your own 3D character with the new mocap layer, in Boneyface 3. So let's start. This video tutorial will be divided in four chapters. In Chapter 1, I'm going to talk about all you need to know to create your custom mocap data, that is made with video sequences. Keep in mind that this is not a tracking tutorial. This chapter is aimed to know the process to create video based motion capture. In Chapter 2, I'm going to show you how to work with Bony Face 3, and a 3DS Max biped character. In Chapter 3, I'm going to import the mocap file, and prepare it to use it with Bony Face. Finally in Chapter 4, I'm going to show you the new mocap layer, and how to transfer the animation, from the mocap data, to the face with Bony Face 3. So let's continue with Chapter 1. Let's see the steps to create your own mocap data. First, you have to know what kind of markers you can use. Then, the minimum number of cameras you need. After that, I will be teaching you how to synchronize your videos and convert them into image sequences with QuickTime. Then, I will talk about few tracking softwares you can use and where to buy them. Where you can buy DVDs tutorials, or watch free video tutorials, and finally I will check some different mocap file extensions in 3ds Max. For example, you can use these green round stickers as markers that you can buy in any office store. You can take two stickers and stick them like in this picture, so it becomes a sort of 3D marker that is very useful when you turn your head to the sides, and the markers might be lost from one, or even two camera angles. I didn't do that, but it's a good idea that will save you from lots of pain when tracking. These are the green stickers I used and I cut every one of these rectangular stickers in 8 parts, until I have over 90 markers to create my own motion capture markers, and this is the end result. My goal, was to have as many markers in my face as controller's bony face creates on a mesh. The minimum of cameras you need, is 3 cameras, 2 cameras are useless. When using 3 cameras, rig them like in these pictures. One in front of you, another to the left, and the last one to the right, pointing your head. Every single camera should be stand on its own tripod. Here, you can see how I set up my three cameras, that are in front of a little stool, where I sit. If you can afford it, I recommend using four cameras, or even more like in this picture. This way you avoid possible occlusion like it happened to me with one marker in my neck that was occluded by my jaw. Now I'm going to synchronize my three video sequences with QuickTime. Here I have my three video sequences. Front, left, and right. The resolution for this video is 720p, at 5994 frames. Now I'm going to move these two little icons in the time slider to set the start and end frame for the front video. When you record your videos, make a gesture at the beginning, and at the end to use them as a reference, to be able to know the region you need to use, and to synchronize the three videos. After you get the region you want, go to Edit, and click on Cut Selection, to scale down the time slider to the region you defined. Now, bring the left sequence and do the same region adjustment. To synchronize the left video with the front video, put the front video in the first frame, 
then go to the left video and move the slider until you get the same frame as the front sequence. Do this by following the gestures of your face. To set the end, go to the last frame in the front video, and then search the same frame in the left sequence. In the left video or sequence, go to Edit, and cut selection to define the region. Now, the front video, and the left video, are synchronized. Let's bring the right video, and do the same process. When synchronized, Always do it with the front video. Now, the three video sequences are synchronized. The next step is to convert these videos into image sequences. Select the front video. Go to File, Export. Select the folder where you are going to save your sequence. In Export Rollout, Choose Film as Image Sequence, then, go to Options. I recommend to use TGA files, now set the frame rate. In this case is 5994 frames. By default you can choose up to 30 frames. To set your frame rate, you have to write it down. Then, hit OK, write the name you want in the folder you want. and hit save. I already have the images sequence exported. Let's check my sequences. I have 703 frames for the front image sequence, so the other two image sequences must have the same amount of frames. If not, do the synchronization process again until the left and right videos matches the number of frames as the front camera. Among all the tracking softwares, you can use these three to create facial motion capture. PF Track by the Pixel Farm Synthize by Anderson Technologies, and Match Mover by Autodesk. You can find PF Track in the Pixel Farm website. Here you find a series of products which the main one is PF Track, that has lots of features including the possibility to create motion capture. It costs $3,300, but you can get a learning edition version. Fill the demo registration and it will be sent to your email. To find Synthize, go to ssontech.com. Synthize cost $599. You can get a demo version. Go to try and fill the demo registration form. Autodesk Matchmover comes free since 3DS Max 2010 and 2011. Matchmover 2012 and 2013 versions comes in the Autodesk Maya package. To learn how to use PF Track, 
Go to fxphd.com website, where you can buy lots of DVDs for different softwares. In here, you can get the DVD PF Track 2011 Tracking Challenges, which teaches you to create motion capture. To learn facial tracking with Synthize, go to YouTube and find the user VFX World. Scroll down the videos until you find the Terminator tutorial. In this video, he tracks markers in his face and although he uses only one camera, I know that you can import more than one video sequence, so I believe that you can create motion capture with several cameras. To learn motion capture with Matchmover, Go to cmivfx.com. These guys are like the FX PhD website that sells tutorials for many softwares. Go to 3D Match Moving and check camera based motion capture DVD. This is a body motion capture tutorial, but the principles to track the markers are the same as tracking facial motion capture. You can also go to YouTube. Type Matchmover in the search bar, and you will find this video tutorial named, Matchmover Tutorial, that last 1 hour and 4 minutes. In this video this guy uses two video sequences. Here is a second video sequence. He is tracking a black marker. And here we have the front view. Let's go to 3ds Max to check some mocap files. Go to Files, Import, and first I'm going to import an FBX file. Since it's in centimeters, change the units to centimeters, and hit OK. Now we have the motion capture solution with the three cameras I used. Let's see the animation. Now let's reset the scene and bring another mocap file extension this time a TRC file. For this time uncheck the root node, set the geometry size to 0.8, and hit OK. Let's see the animation. You can see that the shape of the point cloud has a perfect form of my face. Now let's reset the scene, and bring another mocap file extension, 
only this time I'm importing it with bony face. This is bony face icon. Click it and the toolbar is open. Go to BVH and click the green plus icon to import your file. This is a well structured BVH file. You can erase it with the red X icon in Bony Face Toolbar. Now let's continue with Chapter 2. Now I go to 3DS Max and open my character. I will change the end time frame number to show the entire animation. Hit play. Let's increase the velocity to not taking much time to see this animation. Here I have my character walking in circles and kicking. This is a very complex character that is rigged not only with biped, but also with extra bones for secondary motion. Let's hide the mesh to see the rig. These bones control the movement of the belly, chest and neck area. Now, Let's start working with bony face. When using biped you have to work all the bony face process in figure mode. Let's now unhide the face parts and open bony face. And open bony face. When click the icon the toolbar is opened. In the bony face toolbar you have the green plus icon that opens bony face window. This blue icon opens the setup rig. You can import or erase BVH files, hide face parts and controls, and the extended tools. Let's place the toolbar over here, and open bony face main window. Let's start picking. First the head, hide it to see the face parts. Then the lower teeth the upper teeth and the tongue. Then the right eye and the left eye. Wait for it. You have to set this controls in the middle of your eyes, in my case the value is 2. Now, unhide everything. Pick the head bone. The next step, is the face spline creation process. I won't show this part in this video because there are already video tutorials in scriptattack.com website. Go to tutorials and there you have it. Now, I'm going to pick my splines that I saved earlier, with this icon. Wait for the splines that are being created. You can see that the splines are placed in the face like they should for this face. Then, tick, add smooth and now I'm going to rig the face by hit the button, rig it. This will take a little time. Let's wait for it until it's finished.
The rig is now complete. You can see the direct and soft controls, and the bones that bony face creates to rig the face. Now, it's time to skin the face, but since my character is already skinned, you have to tick, reuse skin, so this way bony face won't ruin your original skin salve. Let's hit the button, skin it. The skin process for this character will take about 5 minutes. I won't cut the video so you can see that there is no tricks. The reason why is taking this time is because bony face has to analyze the entire body and exclude the vertex to not ruin the previous skin solution. After that, bony face has to create the correct weights for every specific area in the face. If you had only one head, that would take less than 30 seconds, but this character is really a very complex character. I wanted to use this character to prove that you can use bony face in the most difficult situation. You can scroll the video if you like. I'm still here. Let's wait for it.
the skin process is finished. From now on, you have to work out of the figure mode. Let's check the end result. See how bony face structure moves with the body. Save your file and now let's continue with the next chapter. In the previous chapter I didn't check bony face controllers to see how they move the face. Let me hide these controls to keep the soft controls, which are the yellow ones. Let's move few controls to test. Now, I'm going to hide the mesh in the biped to import the motion capture file that will be created in the center of the grid. Go to File, Import, and this time I'm using my TRC file. Tick the root node, and the size at 0.8, and hit OK. Now, the time slider has been updated to have the numbers of frames that your mocap file has. Let's play the animation. Now unlike a BVH file which is a very complex structure, the spheres in a TRC file doesn't have any relation between them, so we have to prepare it to have at least the head bone marker that follows the entire solution. Select all the markers, but not the root node. In case you didn't set coordinates in your tracking software, place the markers, so they are roughly inside the root node. Then lift all the solution a little bit in the z-axis. Now, let's take the middle neck marker as our head pivot. Then go to helpers and create a dummy, like this. Align the dummy to the head pivot marker in position, and orientation. With the dummy selected, go to hierarchy, effect pivot only, click snap rotation, and rotates the pivot 90 degrees, so the Y axis is up and the Z axis is looking the expectator. Uncheck effect pivot only. Go to Motion Panel, Assign Controller, and select Rotation, click the Assign Controller icon, and assign the look a constraint. Click, Assign Look at Target. Then change Select Local Axis to Y, and Up Node Control to Look at, and only then pick your head marker which is the one over your head. Now the dummy rotates and moves along with the entire solution. Click Set Orientation and rotate the dummy, so it's positioned straight.
That's fine to me. See how the dummy rotates perfectly with the entire solution. Now let's create a point helper, align it to the dummy in position, and orientation. Here I change the pivot axis, but this step is not necessary. In this part of the video, I noticed that the dummy pivot in X and Z changed from what I set first before applying the look at constraint and I tried to change it back, but that will result in a bad rotation for the dummy. So I just undo this by click Ctrl Z and the dummy looks ok again. I also set the point helper pivot back. Now, I'm going to bake the dummy movement to the point helper, which will be keyframed thanks to a little script line. This way the point helper will be animated, and it will become our head bone marker. To do this, open Max Script Listener by hitting F11, or going to Max Script Menu, and open Max Script Listener. Then, paste this little script line. The script line will be in this video description, so you just copy and paste it. You have to change the end value here, in case you have more or less keyframes for your mocap animation. I write 300 because I have 288 frames which is near to this. Then go to the end of the line, and with the point helper selected, hit enter. See how keyframes are being created for the point helper. Close Max Listener. Check the animation. Now the point helper is animated and from now on, will be our head bone marker. Select the point helper and the dummy and link them to the root node, to move the entire structure next to our character head. Unhide the mesh and the biped. The last important part you have to do before transfer the animation is to link the root node to the biped neck bone. So this way the head will rotate in case your character turns back and walks away, and it's also important 
To have your mocap structure, following your character. Save your file. This is it. Finally, we have our character and our mocap data ready and prepared to transfer the animation with the new mocap layer in Bony Face. So let's continue with the next and final chapter. This is what we have so far. The character rigged, with Bony Face 3, and the mocap file ready. Let's put the mocap solution nearer the head. Choose an angle to view both, and hit Ctrl C to create a camera. This is just for preview purposes. Go to the left viewport. Hide the mesh, select both, the camera and the target, and link them to the biped neck bone. So this way you will be able to see the animation. Now let's go to Bony Face Toolbar, and click the Drive icon. The layer window is open. Here you have different types of animation layers, like the normal layer, the auto blink layer, the mocap layer and the lip sync layer. Click on Create Mocap Layer, and then click the green plus button. A new mocap layer is added in the layer list. Then, click the first icon that says Active Layer Options and it expands the window to show you the tools for the mocap layer. Now let's choose a better angle to start working. I'm creating a layer to hide the camera. OK, to transfer the animation, the first step is to link the mocap markers with the bony face controllers. Let's unhide all the controllers with the All button icon in the bony face toolbar. Now the linking process is very simple. You just select the marker you want to transfer. For example here I select the jaw marker then hold control and select the jaw control, to select both, then go to the settings and hit the green hand button to link those two, but first you have to link the head bone. Remember that the head bone for the mocap data is the point helper. Select it, hold control in your keyboard and then select the biped head bone, and hit the green hand button. Now they are linked. Unchecked Auto Linked Opposite and start to link the markers with its correspondent controller. Now, I'm linking few markers to controllers, so you can see the process. Here the jaw marker with the jaw controller, the left corner mouth with the left corner marker, the right corner mouth with the right corner marker and so on.
Now, since I have over 90 markers, this will take a while, so I will open the list file I saved earlier. After you finish to link all the controllers, save the list as a BFL file, and this way you don't have to pass for this process. I just opened my file. See the entire list of the linked controllers to the markers. After you finish to link the controllers, the next step is to preview some frames to see how the final animation will be. This is done with this XYZ hit to key button. Go to a frame of your preference, hit normal and then click the XYZ hit to key button. Nothing happens. Click select to select everything, and see when you hit the XYZ button, nothing happens again. The first mistake, was to have markers ticked. You want only change the controllers from now on. Hit normal again and nothing happens again. Now, if you move to another frame and click the XYZ button you will see that something happens, but in the incorrect way. Just erase the frame with the red minus button. Go then to the first frame and hit normal, now go to any frame you want, and click the XYZ button and see. Here you have an over exaggerated position animation, hit the minus red button to erase that frame, to make the head bone return to its position, go to figure mode and then go out. Now to adjust this, just decrease the values and you will see. I will decrease it to 15, let's check. You see, now it's much better, but I think it can be even better. Erase the keyframe. To have the head bone in its position, go to figure mode and out, then, I decrease the value to 10.5 as you can see. It didn't work because I hit normal at a frame different from the first one. You might find yourself making this mistake a lot, but now you know how to correct it. Let's preview again in this keyframe. Now that is much better. OK just erase this keyframe. Finally, it's time to transfer the animation. Make sure to be in the first keyframe, hit normal, and then hit the green tick button, say yes to animated head bone. There you have it. A successful transferred animation. Let's see the animation now. Change the velocity to 1x for normal speed.
Here I noticed a little skin problem, but it's nothing you can solve in seconds. Go to Skin Modifier, click Envelope and scroll down to Paint Weights. Open the Paint Weights option, and decrease the strength to 0.1, and start painting until you get the right shape. Do the same with the opposite envelope. To decrease the painting area, hold Alt, and paint over the area you want to decrease the strength. That's it. So simple. Let's see the animation again. Let's see the animation out of the camera. See how amazing the head rotation and face animation looks. If you would like to play with the weights go to the drive window and hit the second blue icon to open the weights window. Hit select to select all the controllers and add them to the list and then hit wait. Now you can select the area you want, in this case the mouth area. Select the controllers in the preview window by holding control and select them. Then change the value next to the Weight tab and hit Weight. I will decrease the mouth area even more. See? Now it's much better to me. Let's play the animation.
Now I recommend you to animate the eyes using the auto blink layer. There is a video tutorial on how to use it in script attack website. You can also combine this animation with poses that you can create in different layers, animate the tongue, etc. The possibilities are endless. Let's see the animation for the last time. Well I'd like to thank the guys at Script Attack for developing such a magnificent tool. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Thanks for watching.